science is what demystifies the mystical. And if you can combine a little quantum physics, the science of how mind and matter are related, the science of possibility, and you combine it with a little bit of neuroscience or neuroplasticity or some neuroendocrinology, a little bit about psychoneuroimmunology, how your mind and body are related, and a little bit about epigenetics, all of those sciences build a model about possibility. And so then if you can teach people the proper information, and as they learn that information, if they can turn to the person next to them and explain that information, the moment they begin to explain that information, they're describing a model of understanding. And as they review that information and between the two of them, they build a sound model. They're firing and wiring new circuits in their brain to reflect the model that they're learning. And as they remind themselves of what, of what they're learning, uh, they're reproducing the same level of mind and they're causing their brain to fire in a new sequence or a new pattern, or a new combination. And whenever you make your brain work differently, you're changing your mind. So when students begin to share the information after they've learned it, they're creating more memories and they're assembling new neurological networks. Those new neurological networks become the hardware that they're installing in preparation for the experience. Now, why is that relevant? Because then if you can set up the conditions in the environment and give people the proper instruction, a certain percentage of those people will get their behaviors to match their intentions and their actions equal to their thoughts. They'll get their mind and body working together and they'll have some type of transformation. Now, my passion over the last four years, uh, because we were seeing significant changes in people's health and their well-being, uh, they were having tr uh, tremendous mystical experiences in our workshops, uh, I had to start measuring to see what exactly was taking place in people's brains in their bodies and uh, in the energy uh, 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 in the room as well. So I assembled a team of scientists and researchers and um, we have done probably 15 uh, advanced workshops where we began to measure some of those transformations. Now, it's important to measure those transformations and because if you can measure the transformation, now you have more information to understand how to teach transformation the next time. And if you could measure that transformation again and gather more information, uh, you can teach transformation a better than next time and you can begin to close the gap between knowledge and experience. And for me, that's been my passion in the last four years. And we've done close to uh, 9,000 plus brain scans on our students. Uh, they come to an event and we scan their brain before they come to their, an event. They go through four days of intense training. Uh, from six in the morning till six in the evening. And, and it's not something that they are tortured in doing. They love doing it. Uh, and uh, then we measure their brain at the end of the event. And we notice significant changes that take place. And I wanna know that those changes are not just taking place in their mind, but those changes are taking place in their brain. At the same time, we're also measuring people's brains in real time. now. The, the model that we use for transformation has everything to do with meditation. And why do we use meditation as the model? Because if you're waking up in the morning and you're coming back to your senses, and the moment you come back to your senses, uh, because the brain is a record of the past, it's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced to this moment. The moment you wake up in the morning and you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the old hardware or circuitry of the past, which means you're probably gonna be thinking in the past or thinking in familiar ways, and you're gonna show up predictable in your life. By the same means, the moment you wake up in the morning and you search for the familiar feeling called you, the moment you get in touch with the feelings that are connected to the problems or the people in your life, because feelings and emotions are a record of the past, the moment we get in touch with that familiar feeling, our body is now in the past. So then if the emotions of our body are driving our thoughts and driving our behaviors, then for the most part, we're thinking and acting from the past. And if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, 
then of course, if you're thinking in the past, you're going to be creating more of the past in your life. So we use the model of meditation because the moment the person wakes up in the morning and they come back to their senses, and as they see the same people and they go to the same places and they do the exact same things at the exact same time, it's the external environment that's turning on different circuits in their brain, causing them to think and feel equal to everything that they know. And as long as they're thinking equal to their environment or the people and the conditions and the places and the objects and things in their environment, as long as they're thinking equal to their environment, they keep reaffirming the same reality. And if they are having those certain emotions and those emotions are driving certain thoughts and those thoughts then are creating the same emotions and the emotions are then are driving the same thoughts and how you think and how you feel creates your state of being, then for the most part, people who get caught in these cycles of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking over time condition their body to subconsciously become the mind of that emotion. So then we use meditation because to change then is to be greater than your environment, to be greater than the circumstances in your life, to be greater than the conditions in your world. And every great person in history understood this. So then in meditation, when you close your eyes and you disconnect from the external environment, and at the same time, you replay soft music in the background or you put earplugs in, you're diminishing the amount of sensory information coming into your brain. If you are then conditioning your body to be the mind emotionally, and it's in the habit of getting up in the morning and running through the same routine and doing the exact same thing that it did yesterday, now the body's been programmed into a predictable future based on what it's done in the past. And let's just say the person's been doing that for 20 or 30 years. They wake up in the morning, they check their cell phone, they check their text, they check their Facebook, they check their emails, they check the news, they get up, they go to the toilet, then they get a cup of coffee, and then they get dressed after they take a shower, then they drive to work the same way, they do the same things, they see the same people, they push the same emotional buttons, they eat the same foods, they watch the same television shows. And then they do their same routine before they go to bed at night. If they're doing that over and over again, and a habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that's acquired through frequent repetition. A habit is when you've done something so many times, the body's been programmed to be the mind. And for the most part, people's bodies are programmed into a predictable future based on what they've done in the past. And very often, they're not in the present moment. So then if you were to sit your body down and tell your body it's no longer the mind and it's not eating anything or tasting anything or smelling anything or experiencing anything so it's not feeling anything, then for you to sit your body down then and find the present moment, then you'd have to be greater than your body and to be greater than time. And meditation is the perfect tool that we use to do this. So then if you're gonna heal your body by thought alone, if you're going to create some new event in your life by thought alone or some new future that's not the same as your past by thought alone, then you have to be defined by thought alone. And so then our students then have been instructed and taught how to change their brain waves and in a meditative state, move into those altered states of mind so that they can begin to get into the operating system where those subconscious programs exist. And so we've measured people in real time during meditation. And we know that our students can change their brain waves in four seconds or five seconds or nine seconds or 12 seconds. They know how to regulate internal states. And I wanted to see during the meditative process what was going on in the inner workings of their mind and their brain.